All right, welcome into the next um, series on my channel. Sorry, there's a hit on the lens. Uh, this is going to be the excellent Prelude to Rebellion uh, Mobilization and Unrest in Lower Canada, 1834 to 1837 by Compass Games. Um, this is a game that, you know, has gotten some coverage. It's, you know, Compass Games is a small herb publisher. Um, they specialize more in war games from my seeing, but they do other stuff as well. Um, but this is more of like a political strategy game a bit. Uh, so, But it has picked up some coverage from people like the Player's Aid and uh, <clears throat> Callendale who did a video on it. So if you want to learn more of the intricacies of the rules, um, I would go check out those. Though you'll get plenty of strategy and analysis uh, from this video. But this simulates the um, freedom movement, separatist movement, uh, rebellion almost uh, during the mid 1830s in uh, Lower Canada, you know, around Montreal on, in the St. Lawrence River. That uh, basically was taking place around the French-speaking Canadians um, and pitted the, called the the Patriot players. Um, and uh, pitted them against the Loyalists, who were traditionally going to be farmers and uh, merchants who lived in the urban areas of Montreal and Quebec, and then in the eastern part of the, this region of Lower Canada. And uh, it uh, accelerated um, in intensity until it ended in, in 1837 with a, pretty much a general British crackdown. Um, to prevent something similar to what happened with the uh, United States um, or just a general separatist movement. But, so that's the theme, uh, because normally I don't explain game themes because they're pretty obvious, but obviously this one's fairly uh, obscure. But I think that the novelty in it adds to it. But I, I have played this once, and it's really good. I think that the, it benefits from this scoring system over here. Um, it's not very complex, so I would say it's a step up from some other card-driven games. It is card-driven, so it's going to be very traditional um, action points and uh, events, so that will be very familiar. But it adds in a few other twists like scoring dice and uh, some interesting key event mechanics that add to the, uh, the theme and the strategy. Also, there are special actions, which are down here if I can get to them, which give both players the ability to reach into a special uh, range of abilities that only they can access pretty much, and you can only use them once per turn, but they're very powerful, so uh, also fun. And uh, the last thing that's different is these opportunity points, which I really like, and this is just a different set of cards down here that are available to either of the players, obviously the Patriot player. Um, who has the green, and then the loyal player has the red, and there are also some neutral cards, just like in any traditional card-driven game. But like, let's say that a uh, the Patriot player plays a loyal card that is, this is like a Twilight Struggle, in which if you play the event that's an opponent's event, it automatically happens. But let's just say the prerequisite isn't met. Um, that would go into the neutral opportunity pool. And if you play a neutral card, for the points, not the event, then the card will go into the opportunity pool. So it it uh, is like a nice ecosystem in its own, and the opportunity points are really cool because then you have to decide, well, I really want to trigger this event because these key events come in that are really important um, that can really change the tide. Um, that's what happened in my last game. The Patriot player was pretty much guaranteed to win, but there is one really nasty event card at the end for the loyal player. And they really stole it. I mean, that was if, if that was an opposed game, I would have felt really hard done by if I was the Patriot player because they there was no way the only way they could have lost that game was because of that one card. So I'm not going to say that's unfair because that's the way the game works and it models the actual conflict. But they they were going to win that game if had it not been for everything working out exactly right in that one card. Um, so I'll hop right in. I will say, though, just some initial analysis besides the fact that it's fun and interesting and unique. I think that this system very accurately models or much better, um, is much better at being accurately modeling 
uh, elections because my problem, this isn't s specifically an election game. These aren't like districts you're trying to win for elections, even though some of that is happening. It's more it's like a feature of this overall system. The elections, that is. Uh, but the problem I have with 1960, 1860 campaign trail, uh, you name it, the 1912 one, the, these traditional election games, uh, even even Demacher somewhat, um, and I can't think of any more, even though I know I have some, because I love election games. They don't really understand voter how voters work, because, you know, when you're playing 1960, it's pretty much who wins New York. Um, and it could be that, you know, it comes down to a different state, but a lot of the times it comes down to, like, one or two states. And one player will swing in and place all of their cubes in. They'll completely wipe the other player out, put all their cubes. And the other player comes in, the Nixon player comes in and wipes out all the Kennedy cubes and puts theirs. And, I mean, that would be like if, you know, subsequent polls come out and Kennedy has an eight-point lead, and the next week a poll comes out and Nixon has an eight-point lead. I mean, it just doesn't, it does not happen like that. It doesn't, there, could there have been elections in which the, the electorate was so <clears throat> undecided that they could swing because of events so much? Sure, it's possible. But really, elections aren't decided by undecided voters. They're decided by voter turnout. So this game much more accurately represents that in that if you can turn out your supporters, which this is really more building them, this is then this could be considered like this is the pool of supporters that you have, and that this is the amount that are committed. But really, what it is, it's like this is the maximum that you can sustain, and the more you have is the more that you've brought over to your side. So it's kind of representing that, but really, that's how elections are won, is just by turning out uh, your base of supporters. Now, there's some debate over that. And some say that that's a part of it, but really undecided voters are the final, you know, both that'll get you to 45%, but the undecided voters are the final five, you know, and you, you could have that argument, but it definitely is not realistic to say that you can just go in, swing a bunch of voters in one state, and suddenly you're ahead. It's, it does not work like that in reality, and games have a difficult time of uh, conceptualizing that, which frustrates me because I really like election games. And they're good for a game sense, sure, but that's not, it's not realistic. So it's kind of like, why are we doing this if it doesn't work like this? So I put that aside when I play them, but it's nice to see something like this where it actually makes sense to how it would work. Because this number can go up and down. You can lose. It's not like you turn out supporters and they just stay with you forever. You can lose them, but it's not like this is one track and it goes up and down depending. I mean, it, you could say that it's a net, like like in New York, if Kennedy has four, that doesn't mean that everyone supports Kennedy and no one supports Nixon. It's just that in the net, it's four more than Nixon. So when he flips and puts four of his cubes, he's just netted more support. You can do whatever you want, but really, I don't think it quite, it quite makes sense. But anyways, that's not at all the point of this. That's just to say that I think this system, which there's going to be another one, Prelude to Revolution, which is going to be on the Russian Revolution, which I really look forward to, um, I think that a system like this would work really well for an election. I have posed, and I've, I've kind of worked on it my own, but I'm not really well equipped to do it, um, a 2000 state-level election in Florida. So, of course, Florida came down, the election in 2000 came down to Florida, in which case it came to a recount. I think Prelude to Recount would be an excellent name. But a state-level um, election uh, game just in Florida uh, where you have tracks like this and in regions, it wouldn't be individual counties because there's too many counties, but the individual in regions and you would, you know, it would be a scoring track. It wouldn't be like traditional election games. It'd be based off victory points. So it keeps with this system. But anyways, that's just a, an idea that I have. I think it's interesting. And maybe as we go through this game, you'll understand uh, wh what I'm saying at. So let's go ahead and hop in. Uh, both sides are going to have a hand of seven every single time. They'll be drawing from two different decks one that matches the year or years that we're in, and one is a generic deck that is always um, the same. It's just the same events uh, around. So for the Patriot player first, they have a big six of point card, 78,000 names, add eight cubes in rural counties, no more than two per county. This is going to be nice because there's also one down here, 78,000 names in the opportunity pool. So playing both of these means that they can add 16 cubes out in the rural counties, which are the non-Montreal and Quebec 
So uh, that can really get them started as far as uh, taking control of these rural counties, which is one of the scoring tracks, but then also setting themselves up well for creating organizations, which is another one, both of which typically uh, favor the Patriot player. So that's a good double whammy to have early. Um, the BL BALC, the British American Land Company, obviously an opposing event. It's not terrible, but the biggest thing is that it adds to the rebellious spirit. The rebellious spirit is this track over here, and it's generally bad for the uh, Patriot player. If it ever gets to the top, the game ends, and that simulates uh, basically open conflict between the two sides. Um, so the lower it is, the more stable the conflict is, the much more quieter both sides are as far as willingness to fight. Um, and then as it goes higher and higher, that means that uh, the populace, the Patriot populace is more subjected to uh, not abuse, but repression by the British officials or they fear, it's called the fear of reprisal table. Um, basically, the Patriots can lose cubes off the board. And if it ever gets to the top, the game ends and there's special scoring, um, depending on how ready you were for an open conflict. Um, it's not necessarily bad that it gets up to the top. The Patriot player in my last game was at like 13, and they would have won if they had gotten it to 15, but they didn't. They didn't get there in time because the uh, loyal player played a special uh, or a key event card that ruined it. So it's not always bad, but you have to time it well um, so that if you want to go to a final showdown off an extra scoring, you can. But you know you have to be prepared for that. Sometimes it's actually quite bad. So, uh, anyways, this card is not that bad minus the fact that it's got that rebellious spirit. Uh, talk among the kinsfolk. Loyal player adds a one cube to a county with a loyal bias, then add a t three total of three cubes to counties with patriot bias, no more than one. So that bias just means that this one has, even if the, pa the loyal player maxes it out, the patriot player can always have more, so that's bias towards them, which once again is how elections often work um, in that, uh, you know, a county or an area in a particular state will be biased towards one side, whereas if you turn out everybody and you've got all of your people out, you still are not going to be able to have more than just the residual amount of supporters that the other candidate has. So this would also model elections well. But this is a uh, loyal bias. This is a patriot bias. So that's what that's referring to. Concerned reformists at Etienne's par at Etienne parents, and that's just three victory points. Uh, former patriots just add some cubes to the urban counties. La Clique du Chateau, uh, more to the urban counties, uh, disrupted meetings, which you can use to remove cubes, um, which is kind of cool, and that's their hands. So They're not terrible. Now, the one thing that I will say that is you pretty much have to play all of these cards. Um, there are eight turns or eight action rounds on a turn, and you have seven cards. Now, you can spend the opportunity points, which can can like negate some of that, and you'll end up playing less. But most of the time, you're going to have to play pretty much all but like one of your cards in your hand. So there's not a whole lot of, you know, holding bad events, but usually you can hold one, which is kind of how it works in, in something like Twilight Struggle or something like that. You can usually hold on to one, or 1960, where you always hold on to one, pretty much. <clears throat> so you have uh, the loyal hand, pretty well split. They have loyal activities, which just allows them to basically get action points. The St. Jean-Baptiste Society. Um, I did not get this card last game, but this one's interesting. Um, the Patriot player can get a, a victory point and uh, some cubes. So the, the British player, the loyal player, does not want this to come out. Um, not 10 or 20, 92 resolutions. So some removal of Patriot cubes. Uh, La Minerva, uh, some more urban county stuff. More urban county stuff from the Montreal Gazette. Political tremors. This one says parliamentary. So some of the turns here are, uh, I'll have to zoom in because I don't think you can see it. Um, some of them have this little scroll above them, and these are considered parliamentary sessions. So some of them only occupy one turn or one action round, and some of them span multiple action rounds. But during those action rounds, you can play events that have this little parliamentary keyword there. So this will be eligible in the first two action rounds. If they hold it, 
outside of those, then it will be useless. Rocky elections, Indomantagens, I don't really, some of this I'm not going to be able to pronounce, unfortunately. But that's a very key uh, county. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. Yeah, I guess county. That's a key county out here um, in the west by the St. Lawrence River, where both sides have a lot of events, and uh, the Rorty loyal player doesn't have a lot of negatives. Um, so, once again, going to the election thing, if you'll notice on these counties, there is a penalty. It's more expensive for the player who is not biased in that area to gain supporters, which makes sense if you have a, a you know, just think about it for U.S. election purposes. If a Democrat is campaigning in uh, West Virginia, they're going to have a more difficult time of it than if they're campaigning in New York. And vice versa, Republicans can have a different, more difficult time campaigning in uh, Washington than they would in Alabama. So th that system here replicates that. There's also some for the Patriot player, but typically the one that's not the biased player is going to have a hard time catching up, which is good, but uh, that's another nice simulation. So, with all of that crap out of the way, that doesn't have anything to do with the game so much, it's just an overview, we can now finally hop in, and the Patriot player always decide who goes first, and I probably imagine it will be them. Last time I played, they always went first, so let's see. So the Patriot player is going to open up with 78,000 names. This is the one from their hand, um, not the one from the opportunity pool, and they get to add eight cubes in rural counties, no more than two per county. So now, typically, whenever you're <coughs> placing cubes by action points, you have to pay the extra points uh, listed. It's one to place in rural, two to place in urban, plus any of the extra um, listed points. And there's a catch-up mechanic where if in the rural counties you're behind, it's actually one action point less, but that's not going to be of concern here. But when you're placing cubes, just like in other card-driven games or other board games, you're not beholden to the same rules as normal. So uh, these eight cubes are going to go in the Richelieu Valley, which is going to be a very key area for the Patriot player. Um, these six counties, Richelieu, uh, Vicherie's, uh, Chambly, saint hyacinthe Rouville, and La Acadie. Um, anyways, but these six counties are very important. Uh, I'm assuming this is a river. It looks like a river, but this valley um, is very important. So <clears throat> they're going to uh, max out in this area. So there's two, four, six, and eight. And the objective here is to get these up high enough that we can create organizations. Um, we'll have to have an organization in an urban county first, but once we do that, um, you can see there's two boxes here, one for each side. The higher, the larger amount of cubes you have, the easier it is to create an organization, but that's a separate scoring track that uh, is favorable to the Patriot player. Now the card had a organization scoring die on it. So we have to roll this die three of which has organization, and the other three sides represent each of the other three scoring tracks, rural, external influence, and urban counties. And whichever one we roll, we move that marker on that track further down. So we get urban counties, so we're going to move the urban county scoring track down by one, and if it ever gets to the score, we'll score it, but that's not going to happen yet. So that's a big part of the game as well, is uh, those scoring die. Okay, so now over to the Loyalists. So while the Patriot player is getting the jump out in the rural counties, they, the Loyalist player is going to get a jump in the urban by playing the Montreal Gazette and get two cubes in Montreal. And those are listed over here. And the urban counties uh, are pretty evenly split most of the time between the two sides, really. The Patriot player has this one, and the Loyal player has this one. But this is going to shift the balance to where the Loyalist player has both. And it's a big shift because they have one, they have one, which means in the scoring track it's at zero. You get two points for controlling one, like 
if you control one and the other person doesn't control any, then you get two points. If you control both, you get four. If it's a tie, you both get zero. So this went from a zero to a four because each was controlling one. Now one is controlling two. So that's a big swing. So those can be a nice source of victory points revenue for you over time. So once again, uh, we throw a scoring die. This time it's going to be the urban counties. Um, and once again, you're never guaranteed to get the one that you want. But it's a likelihood, and look at that. They roll the O side, so the organization rolled an urban county, and the urban county rolled an organization. So it happens that way. Over to the Patriots. So the Patriot player is going to pick up 78,000 names. I'm trying to get out of the glare. Same card they just played, except it's in the opportunity pool. So they're going to spend six of their six points to buy this card. You pay the um, activities action point cost, um, and they're going to do the same thing they just did, and they're going to do it in the same place they just did, basically, to continue to lay down the foundations of a strong core group of supporters here. So there's two. Four, six, uh, six, and we'll do one, one, seven, eight, and that way we're really building up here strong in this area. All right, over to the loyalists. And by the way, the Patriot player had to roll the organization die. They rolled the urban counties again, which isn't great. So they're going to have to do something about that pretty soon. In an attempt to hold on to the advantage that they currently hold, the Loyalist player is going to purchase uh, the place de arms sh shooting and spend four opportunity points to play this. And they can choose between removing two Patriot cubes from Montreal or adding one to the Rebellious Spirit. Very tempting to add to the Rebellious Spirit track, but I think they're going to instead take away two from Montreal because it's more expensive to play in here. It's two for each block, and that makes it obviously more difficult and expensive. So they have to roll a uh, Urban County die for this and they get an organization. So each time the urban county die has been rolled, they've rolled an organization. Each time the organization die has been rolled, they've rolled an urban county. So interesting how that works. But that can be the bane of your existence in this game as you keep rolling the die, hoping to uh, get a certain result and then it never seems to happen. So as of right now, two scoring tracks are almost to the score. The other two have not moved at all. So the uh, Patriot player will play uh, the British American Land Company, which uh, has a loyalist, loyalist event, but that, becomes, that comes afterwards. So they're going to get the four uh, action points. They're going to spend two of them over here on the Rebellious Spirit track. So at the end of every turn, um, this goes up by one, and uh, each of these blocks is a modifier. So like, whenever you score the Rural Counties track, um, you roll a die, and the higher that die is, the more cubes that you lose from the board. And that's actually done before you score, so it can really be painful. But this is a minus two modifier, a zero modifier, a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus four. So uh, it, it really ramps up. So the lower you keep it for that purpose, it's good. So each turn it goes up by one, but if you spend two action points, you can flip this token over, and it does not go up by one at the end of the turn. So that helps stymie the uh, advance of that pretty uh, effectively. So then there's two points left over. You can divide your points up however you like, pretty much. Uh, so two points left over, and that is going to be spent in Montreal to add one cube back and work towards reversing the trend there. So I got to roll the external influence die 
and they get urban counties again. So now the urban counties track is only one die roll away from scoring and giving four points to the loyalist player. So this is an opportunity where rather than playing a card that you want to play, you play a card with the uh, die, the scoring die on it that you want. So you can hopefully nudge it along one more before things change. So uh, the loyalist player is going to do that and they already have their card picked out. And they're going to do a rocky election. Oh, by the way, I forgot to finish this out. This card, the event now happens for the loyalist player. And it says, add one cube to Shefford, Sherbrooke, and Stanstead, plus one to the rebellious spirit. So that doesn't prevent the rebellious spirit from going up there. It still goes up because the card says so. It just won't at the end of the turn. And we have to add some loyal cubes. And I'll show you how that affects the tracks. So, Sherbrooke, Stanstead, and Shepherd. The East tends to favor the uh, Loyalist player, the exception of Stanstead, but pretty much everything else here over is, everything else is pro Loyalist. Now, because they took control of three counties, we're going to move the scoring track one, two, three spaces down. So now the rural counties only scores three. Um, so that's, uh, you know, a, a trade-off that you have to decide whether or not uh, you want to make. So uh, the loyalist player now will choose to play this card. And they're going to, right, they could use the points, but they're going to do this one instead. It says uh, choose between performing actions worth two AP, which is half, or gain two opportunity points and place this in the opportunity pool. So they're going to do that, and they're going to get two opportunity points, which will allow them to play this one, which is worth six, at a future date. And uh, they will uh, get to do their choice of card. Uh, their dice. It says loyal choice. So they're going to roll the urban counties, even though it seems as though if you want to roll urban counties, you don't roll the urban county die. But let's take a look here. And that is true. So they get uh, external influence, which also typically favors the uh, loyalist player. But So, oh well. Over to the Patriot player, halfway through the first turn. So to counter the threat that the uh, Loyalists are showing in the urban counties, they're going to play Former Patriots, which um, is a Loyalist event, of course. But it says uh, add one cube. Uh, they'll do this afterwards, but it's going to add a cube for the Loyalist and remove one for the Patriots. But they're going to use the four points to add two. Here, so it costs two to add a cube, unlike one in the rural counties. So it's two, four points, which ties these up. So now that's only worth two rather than four. And it's the best they can do in this situation. They don't have any six point cards that would allow them to take the lead. Um, so that's it. They're gonna do add a cube, remove a cube. So they'll place one in Quebec, they'll remove a cube from Quebec, Quebec as well. And then they'll roll the urban counties die, which they're willing to give up two points more than they're willing to give up four. And they still don't get it. And they get the rural counties, which is fine with them. But it just opens up, you know, the loyalists to come back and take the lead and try and score. So sometimes you'll, just like in other card driven games, like in Twilight Struggle, you'll become highly focused or you know, really honed in on one part of the board and the whole turn will pretty much be absorbed there, um, and that happens here as well, which isn't a bad thing. It makes the board very fluid and uh, interesting because you never know where you're going to be really focusing in, and sometimes your hand plays well to that, sometimes it plays poorly, but um, you can't always control that. So over to the Loyalist. So the Loyalist player is going to play Loyal Activities from the uh, Opportunity Pool, and all the, the, these cards are pretty standard. All they do is just give you 
those action points. So they're like a nice little reserve. But they're going to spend six to get six. And uh, they can use them however they want. And they get to roll the uh, scoring dice of their choice. But this is helpful because if you look in Montreal, it costs two to go here. It costs four to go here, but it costs plus one to go into that box. So that actually costs three. So that's two, five. They have one left over. Which, by the way, that will take them back into the lead and back onto four victory points should they score the Urban County's die, uh, which is here. But they have one cube left over, and they're going to drop that. So I can give you an example. Uh, they're going to drop it in Drummond. Nope. Uh, actually, it's kind of not uh, favorable. They're going to drop it down here, actually. In Bouchonois, maybe. And that will move the urban track, I mean the rural track, down by one. So uh, the designer, Marco Putre, I, I hope I pronounced that correctly, but Marco, he describes um, in his designer videos, which by the way, great job Marco, this is a fantastic game. I look forward to seeing the rest of the series. But uh, he describes two different strategies you could go with um, in the rural county battle. And you can go for a, a wide strategy or a deep strategy. And a wide strategy is um, what the loyalists are doing here, which is spreading their cubes out across a large number, but very thin um, support in these. So they right now control uh, six counties, which is pretty good, but they only have like seven or eight cubes on the board. So it's obviously not a very strong resistance, but there is some. Whereas the loyalist play, the uh, patriot player is going for a deep strategy, which is concentrating on a smaller number of counties, but really building them up. And so as you can see here through the Richelieu Valley, they have a much deeper strategy. Um, which helps with the organizations because you need lots of cubes to make the chances of you getting an organization built more likely. So uh, that's going to you know, play to that end. Uh, but that's the thing about this game is over time, at the beginning, it's a slow build and things are growing and you see the tracks start to max out and you start to you know, really fill in cubes across the board. And it seems very controlled. And then you get into those last couple of turns and you just completely lose control of everything. And it really spirals away, which I feel like is a pretty accurate representation of the conflict. Um, it just, it seems as though everything has just gone to pot. And you can't really, um, you don't have as much grip on the situation or the outcomes or anything like that. So, right now it's very steady. Everyone's adding cubes, you're building, it, it makes sense. And then at the end it kind of jumbles everything up, which is not a complaint, it's... So it makes it very interesting. But um, with that said, they get to roll a die. They're going to roll urban counties to try and get those four points. And finally, the die actually rolls, for the first time, actually rolls the side that is uh, supposed to roll. So they will score, and we can get an idea of how that works. So we will uh, move that into the final score side to award VP and reset. So they're going to get four victory points. For the loyal player, they'll reset the scoring track back to the start, and then there'll be attrition. So you lose cubes over time, and uh, there's actually going to be a different bonus as well that the uh, I forgot about for the Patriot player. So if you have one to five cubes, which is this first block, you'll lose uh, one cube. So both sides, this guy will lose one here, and he'll lose one here. If you're in the next block, which is six to ten, you'll lose two. So like that. And there's an additional victory point award if either side has, um, like if you don't have any cubes, the other side gets two victory points. So since they have none here, that will actually push the victory points up to six. So that's unfortunate for the, uh, the Patriot. I forgot about that, otherwise I wouldn't have played that card until after the scoring uh, was done in the Urban County. So that's going to be a bit of a slip up on my part. But that'll throw it over to the Patriots uh, who can... Uh, kind of shift their focus from defending um, in the urban counties to continuing to build up or to go to the urban counties so they can get organizations on the board. You have to have an organization in an urban county first before you can start doing them in a rural county.
company. So they might start working on that. Patriot player is going to go with talk among the kinsfolk, which um, will add one loyal cube to a county with a loyal bias, which is going to be uh, Buse, Bose. It's going to move the rural county down by one, and they can add three cubes to counties with a Patriot bias. No more than one per county. And so in order to get that scoring die back up, that scoring track back up, they're going to spread them out to these three areas, which will move that track back up by three. One, two, three. Up to four victory points. And they'll roll the rural county die. And they'll get the urban county, of course. Which moves it up. So now the Patriots on action, sorry, the Loyalists on action down five. The Loyalists are going to go with Rocky Elections at Dole. It says uh, both factions add two cubes. So that's not going to change the balance of power so much, but it does benefit the Loyalists because that's a very expensive trek up this track. So getting more cubes is certainly not going to hurt them. But the bigger kicker is they get to add one to the rebellious spirit. So they're always looking to do that uh, whenever possible. Uh, just so they can get that fear of reprisal modifier away. Getting out of this first bit is pretty crucial. So now they're going to roll the rural counties die. And it does roll the rural county side. So they're a little bit closer to scoring that one, just two rolls away. They're going to keep the focus here and though for the uh, Patriot, and they're going to do Disrupted Meeting, which allows them in a place where they have a higher mobilization value, and that just means more cubes, where they have more cubes or equal cubes to another faction, uh, to the other faction, and this is the only place they do actually, and they remove one of their opposition cubes and they add two of their own. And this just represents the ability of having a numbers advantage and making sure that the opposition cannot mobilize effectively. So that one's pretty close to being maxed out. That'll be one of the first places that the uh, Patriot player tries to build an organization. Now the last bit here is they roll a die, the loyalists do, and on a five or higher, you add one to the uh, rebellious spirit. It's a one, so it will not go up. And the loyal, the Patriot player gets away with that, and they're going to get to roll the royal, the uh, sorry, the rural counties again, and they do manage to roll the rural counties. So now they're only one away from scoring it. The Patriot, the uh, Loyalist player is going to play this card, which is now no longer eligible because they're not in a uh, parliamentary session. It will still go into the opportunity pool for the um, Patriot player, but they're not going to get to use it. Um, but they're going to get the four points for this for sure, which they're going to use to try and balance out that rural counties track for its scores. So they're going to place two cubes, one in Drummond, which is going to cost two, and one here in Nicolette, I, I think they're going to do that, which will cost two more. The other option is to try and take a county, because if you take a county, it's a two-point, it's like a two-point swing, you know, now they, they tied one and now they're down one, but I think they're just going to go with this. It'll slide it down to three victory points, which is one less than what they were going to get, and they have to roll an urban county die rather than a rural. And they do get the urban. So that's good. And they probably won't get to score that one twice, but in theory they might be able to, which would be a real coup for them. So now, just two actions left for both sides, and the turn will be out. Patriot player will go with Le Clique du Chateau, which will uh, add two cubes to Quebec, or Quebec, but they're going to get to add four of their own, or four action points worth. And they're going to spend it to go two 
for and retake Montreal, which will shift that urban counties back down to neutral. They'll get to add two in Quebec, which of course isn't great, but they're not gonna really take Quebec, it's not the objective. And they will get to roll the urban counties die, which could advance it a bit further. And it does, which means that it only needs one more. So it's very possible that it could score this turn, which means that the uh, Patriot player is going to want to get at least two cubes in here. Uh, or they're going to need to get a minimum of two cubes there to prevent losing two more victory points. So the loyal player is going to do something interesting. They're going to use um, their uh, one of their governor's privileges. And both players have access to this, which is La Canadienne, which basically just means that whenever you play a card, you can just do everything on it and ignore the opposing event. So uh, we put that marker in the scoring track, on the uh, turn track, because you can only use one per turn. So that's as a reminder. And they're going to play the Saint Jean, Jean Baptiste Society, which uh, happens. Each time there's one of these little uh, dark colored markers on the track, that means that they'll get to do this event, which is pretty powerful. It's a score point, victory point, and uh, add cubes. So they don't really want that one coming out. So they're going to uh, get rid of it while still getting to use the six points, which is really big. Now it costs two because it uh, says right here two AP. So it costs two of the six to do that. And they can then use the remaining four, or sorry, that's the next time. So what we'll actually do is we'll switch. This is the next time you play a card. So they're going to use this one instead, uh, La Minerva. So this is a six-pointer. They're going to use four of it or two of it to uh, buy that uh, special privilege, special action. And then they're going to use the other four. Add two, four, which will nudge this over one more into the two space. Now that is a rural county die. They do have to do that though. It says add two cubes to Montreal and one in two rural counties. So they will take Montreal back and push it over to zero, and they're going to get to add two to rural counties. And the Patriot player will add one more in this, in this valley that they've been focusing on, because that's where they really want to open up. Okay, so then we have to roll a rural county die, and it comes up urban counties, which is not really what they wanted uh, the loyal player, but they'll take it. Um, so they'll score uh, first, and it's going to be zero. Uh, because both sides have canceled each other out, so that's no points. Then they're going to remove cubes, so they'll lose two. And none from there. They'll lose two, and they'll lose one. And then two victory points if anyone doesn't have any. The Patriot player does not, so it's going to go up to eight victory points in favor of the uh, loyal player. And it's not exactly what they wanted to happen, but it's victory points one way or another, so they'll take it. Um, and they're set up for next turn to play the Jean St. Jean Baptiste card. So last play for the uh, Patriot player, followed by the last for the war. So the, pa the Patriot final play will be Etienne's parents, and so they'll uh, have to give up three victory points, which is unfortunate. Um, which pushes it up to 11, and that's not a good hole to be in, honestly. They have not scored any strikes that favored them, but that's not much they can do about that. Um, but they're going to get four points. It has been a fairly poor start for them. So this is going to cost two to go into, plus one is three. Uh, they obviously can't place there because that's two and they only have one left. And the last one is going to keep going into this valley over here. They're going to keep bumping up. Uh, the, the points in uh, the uh, mobilization out here. And they'll roll the organization die. Which 
which comes up as organization, still tied at zero, so nobody really too much caring about that. And then lastly, for the loyalist, they're going to play St. Jean-Baptiste Society, which they'll get to ignore the event because of their special privilege, but they'll get to keep those six points, and they're going to use all six of them, um, and the, the scoring didn't help, but they're going to use all six of them to um, try to build an organization in Quebec. So the way it works is, you need, um, there's a target number. You add the amount of cubes that are there plus the amount of action points you're spending. So there's five points, five cubes, plus six action points. That's 11. You're going to roll three dice, and you want to get equal to or less than that number. And you can add opportunity points to uh, raise the number if you uh, want, but they don't have any opportunity points. So the target number is 11, which is a bit risky, but... Um, they're going to go for it, and they roll, just missed it, so it's a 5 and two fours. so it's going to be a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, they miss it by 2, and uh, they don't have the opportunity points to raise that. So it will be a failure, and they will not get an organization. They will roll the organization die, though, at the end, and it is an organization. So it will score, nothing happens, and it resets. So it could have been two more points in the bag for the loyal player, but it does not happen. And that will bring the turn to an end. So we just basically wrap up some stuff. Any cards that were left um, that had lasting effects go away. Key events would go away, but there are none. Everybody gets their uh, opportunity points back. Six for the Patriot, eight for the loyalist player. Um, the rebellious spirit would go up one if they hadn't spent the two action points to keep it from going up by one and then uh, you would wipe all the cards away if it was the end of a deck but it is not so everybody will get a new hand and there will be some key events out and we'll carry on in the late 1834 um, right after this and the score is 11 to the loyalists all right late 1834, the second turn of the game, and the last turn of the 1834 deck. We have new cards out in the opportunity pool, including our first key event. These are scripted event. These are like, scripted that they are, you know have to come out. The other cards can, they're kind of random. You just draw them out of the deck. So certain cards may show up and certain cards may not. But this, the designer, uh, Marco, did not want these cards to get lost in the deck. He wanted to make sure they got out. <clears throat> so they're scripted. And this is one of its general elections. And basically there are some spots on the board. You can see two of them right here with these little black circles. And uh, the uh, Patriot player can score a victory point for each one of those that they are ahead of the loyal player. And each one of them has at least one cube of the loyal player in them, except for this one here, which has two. So they're... Uh, it's a possibility that they can get some victory points out of that, and they desperately need them because they're down by 11. The other ones are a parliamentary card, which can't be played, uh, a nationalist seminar, which says add three cubes to saint Sin, and uh, patriot activities, which is just, you know, just spend some points. They got a prolonged session, which is also during a rebellion. Uh, parliamentary session which cannot happen and then loyal activities um, so they'll have a few extra opportunity points to spend probably on creating organizations so here are the two hands first for the patriot player they have loyal activities which will just end up giving the uh, loyal player more points le echo du pais maybe uh, three cubes in richelieu um, and one cube in some of the other ones that are in this valley, um, this area. The country's echo is what that means. Um, but that will help in this goal of getting a lot of support in that area. Patriot activities, patriot activities. So there's a, a good resource for some opportunity points. Radical propagandists. Um, the patriot player can add some cubes. The only thing is it will uh, add to the rebellious spirit, which isn't fun. And this one can make the loyal player 
skip uh, their next action round. This one cannot be played because the Rebellious Spirit is not at five. So an interesting hand. Thankfully, it's mostly them, and one of them can't even be played. This one's not that bad. So all in all, a good hand where they're not going to have to spend time avoiding events. For the Loyal player, um, one Patriot Cube, three Rural Counties. That one's pretty good. This one adds cubes into Montreal, um, but they lose two opportunity points, so that's not actually that bad. This one's interesting uh, because you both kind of do like this auction where someone spends opportunity points and the other player spends opportunity points and whoever spends more gets the external influence box to go one in their favor. Um, there's no real way to adjust that outside of events, so uh, when they come up they're kind of important. Activities card. The Illusion of American Support, this gets um, the external influence track one towards the Americans, but it gives the uh, loyalty loyal player four, um, a four marker in the war readiness box. So if it ever does get to 15 on the Rebellious Spirit track, you'll look at this war readiness box. So right now it would be four victory points for the uh, loyal player, but the Patriot player can also add in some, like a two, that's a net two, so that would be two to the... Uh, loyal player and, and so on so that's a good way to get four in there and of course this is uh, has to do with one of my favorite presidents President Martin Van Buren president um, from 30 it, was, it wasn't 36 to 40 was it 32 to, I think it was 36 to 40 because then no William Henry Harrison I think was 36 to 40 because Tyler took over and then it was Polk 40 to 44 that sounds right 32 to 36, maybe? Yeah. So, 32 to 36, Martin Van Buren. One of my favorite presidents, him and Grover Cleveland. A uh, good way to get some cards in Quebec. Quebec. Um, Anti clericalism. We just saw this one in the other, um, in the Patriot player's hand, uh, but it can't be played unless the marker is at five. So, that's unfortunate. So, once again, they only have one card of the opposition. So everybody's going to be playing cards for what they want to play them for. So that's uh, good, I guess. So the Patriot player gets to decide who goes first, and it will probably be them. So the Patriot player opened up by adding some cubes into Montreal, <clears throat> which was a, it was a loyal player card, but it was, a, unel it was ineligible to be played. So it goes into the opportunity pool, just in case. And they rolled the rural counties die, which moved the urban county one. The loyal player is going to play this card, a big old six, just for the six points. And they are going to try and make an organization again in Quebec. And they want to do that, obviously, because the organization points uh, to get a hop on the uh, Patriot player. Because uh, that one is bound to score at some point. Uh, plus, that allows them to go out and uh, start making some organizations out in the countryside. So they have five in Quebec. They have six points. That's 11. They have to be 11, and they have plenty of opportunity points to spend. They roll three fours, which is 12. So they need to spend three points, three opportunity points to get uh, from 11 to tw uh, 14. Or sorry, tw to 12. Oh, they only need to spend one. Excuse me. I was thinking... 3, 4 is 14 for some reason. So they only need to spend 1. So they spend 1 to move their uh, number up from 12, 11 to 12, which is what they rolled. And they'll get to place a organization marker in Quebec. And you'll notice there's only one open uh, spot in Quebec, whereas there's two in Montreal. So that actually, whenever you build an organization in a city, uh, in an urban county, it moves up the marker by 2. And now the uh, loyal player has the opportunity to go out and uh, make organizations uh, in the rural counties, which the uh, loyal, uh, the Patriot player still cannot do. The Patriot player is playing loyal activities uh, for the four points to try and build an organization themselves in Montreal. By the way, the loyal player did roll... Um, a die of their choice, which they chose the organization, and it moved up the external influence. 
So the role for the uh, organization check in Montreal is two sixes and a two, which is 14. They have eight in the area, plus four is 12. So they need to spend two points. Um, they rolled 14, they had a 12. So they can get it, and that will even the organization track back out at zero. And now they can uh, build organizations or start to make organizations as well. And they're in a much better position to do that uh, than the loyal player is certainly because they are very spread very thin um, out in the rural counties. All right, so we're a few action rounds on. The uh, loyal player played with the card that was basically the bidding war. Uh, the patriot player got to choose first how many... Um, opportunity points they wanted to spend and they didn't want to spend any because they want to keep them for upper, uh, for uh, organization uh, building. The loyal player then just got to spend one which moves the external influence track along by one which then they immediately scored and they are now up to 14 victory points. Then the Patriot player added some cubes through a card to a couple of counties in the Richelieu Valley and the Patriot player responded by playing an event card that removed some cubes from pretty much those exact same counties. So now the Patriot player is going to go in with this big six card and uh, go and try and get some organizations going. So they're going to go first here in Richelieu, where they have seven cubes, they're going to use three of those there, so it's going to be a ten that they need to roll um, or lower in order to get that organization. And they roll a one, two, and a three, which is a six. They don't have to spend any points, and they'll get an organization in the Richelieu, which will move the organization track by one. They can keep going. They have three points left over. Um, they could continue to build uh, organizations, which they will. They'll do it here in Do. And three dice in, they roll a five, a five, and a one, so that's eleven. And they have six plus three is nine, so they can just spin two and also get another organization here in Do. So now that uh, track is up to four in their favor. And actually, that's incorrect because uh, I forgot to mention the urban counties, they actually get a bonus. So you can pick which urban county you want to use. The Patriot player can only use Montreal. But if you're within this uh, 6 to 10 box, you get a plus 1. If you're in this one, uh, 10 to 11 or 11 to whatever, um, you get 11 to 15, you get uh, a plus 2, which means that. They're, they're in the plus one space, so actually they would only need to spend one opportunity point here because they uh, had nine, it was an 11, but they also had a plus one to make it 10, so they just needed one there. So that's the advantage of having a lot of cubes in the urban counties is that it helps you when making organizations. So I forgot about that, but that's very important. They'll now get to choose which die they want to roll, and... Uh, you know, going for the rural counties because about the score would be a good three victory points. But, you know, they want to get that organization die. They're going to roll the rural counties just, just to see. And they do get rural counties. So this is a good opportunity to show you how the fear of reprisal table works. So you don't score it yet. You'll go to the fear of reprisal table, which the loyal player will roll 1d6. They roll a five, and then you'll look at the Rebellious Spirit track, which in this area, let me zoom in on all of this here. So this area is a minus two. So this five that they rolled becomes three. Then you look at the Fear of Reprisal table, and a less than a three is no effect. 3 to 4 is minus 2, 1 per county, 5 to 6 is minus 5, 2 per county, 7 to 8 is 7 per county, th max 3, and 9 is 10 cubes. So you can see how that can get really 
hefty. So a five is reduced down to a three, so that means they lose two. And the best place to take these from is always the counties that are sparsely occupied. So they'll remove two cubes from there, and that will push the track down by two only to a two victory point so not great but after you do that is when you score and reset so you can see how you can be in a pretty good position and then the fear of a prizo table comes up and just wipes you so unfortunate um, to have had that come up but it is what it is so now the loyal player who is leading by 12 victory points. All right, a few turns on here, a few action rounds on here. The uh, Patriot player added some more cubes into the uh, Richelieu River Valley, which I looked it up. Um, and this is the river that connects Lake Champlain to the St. Lawrence. So there you go. Um, heavily French speaking. But uh, the loyal player added some cubes um, here you can see they added some and they played um, the illusion of American support which got them an extra four point in the war readiness box giving up a point on the external influence but um, they're kind of wanting to push for that uh, rebellious spirit track and uh, when they can so they're thinking maybe they want to be prepared for that so now on the seventh action round second to last penultimate they'll uh, the Patriot player will play this four card, try and cash in on some more of their hard work they have spent in the Richelieu Valley. So first off, they're going to do uh, Sanctia Sin, two points of the four. They have one point left over in uh, opportunity points, two points left from the card. Uh, so they have in there eight plus two will be ten. So a bit risky, but they really want to get two off. They roll a four, a two, three, and a four, which will be a nine. So they're good. Plus one from the urban county, I forgot. So they're good there. Sanctia Sin gets one, and that'll push up the oops, the organization now to six. So if they can score that organization track, you know, a couple of times, they'll be back in this pretty easily. So uh, they have two more points left and their next best option is either Rouville or uh, Vershers. So we'll go with Vershers. And they have eight there. Plus two will be ten. Plus one will be eleven. One from the uh, urban county. And they have an extra opportunity point left over. So roll a five and two ones, a seven is plenty, and that'll get them yet another in Varshares. So now they have these three, plus the one in Do and the one in Montreal. And that'll push this up to eight points now. So they really want to be rolling on this organization's track as much as possible. They will get to choose which die they roll, and of course it will be the organization's die. Because, I mean, if eight points would put them down only by four, and they scored at the beginning, they'd be up by four. So, I mean, that's huge. And they roll and get rural counties, of course, which isn't terrible, but it's not what they want. So, that will go now on to the penultimate action round of the turn and the year for the loyal player. All right, the final two action rounds, and to wrap it up, the Patriot player is going to spend two action points to try and get a organization in Rueville. So they have seven, plus two is nine, plus one for the urban county is 10, and they have one opportunity point. Dice are in, and it's a four and two ones. That is easy. The dice have been incredibly kind to the Patriot player, and now they're at a ten. So that is pretty remarkable. Um, that would really even the score. They've got to get it once. Unfortunately, they're not rolling it. They're rolling the um, external influence die, which they do roll the external influence side, and it's ready to score. 
The loyal player is going to finish by trying to reverse this tide. But the problem is they have a very difficult time uh, with this. This in the rural counties because it's so biased towards the uh, the Patriot player. So they're going to spend this card, which the event will happen in just a second. They're going to spend those two in Mrs. I mean Mrs. Coy. It looks like Mississippi. So I'm going to take the sippy off the end and that Coy or Quo. I don't know. But anyways, there. And they have seven plus two is nine. Um, they get no bonuses for the urban counties, but they have four opportunity points. So seven, two is nine, and they can chuck in their dice. They get a six, a three, and a one, so that's going to be a ten. They only need to spend one opportunity point then, and they can add their own organization marker, which will knock it back down to plus eight in favor of the Patriot player. So you can see all the tracks in there. And the last roll will be um, Urban Counties, which could score. Also, the External Influence could score. And it's Rural Counties. So going into next turn, um, 1835, 1836, um, there are three tracks ready to score. So um, what we'll have to do here is clean up all the opportunity pool cards go away because we're changing decks. We're going to get a whole new deck out um, and uh, we'll go from there. And right now, obviously, the, the victory points heavily favor the loyal player, but if they can just score that organization track, things are going to be very even. But right now, it's going to be about trying to roll out some points for the loyal player and get that up as high as possible. So when that organization track does score, it won't be quite as painful because there's really not anywhere that they're looking that good as far as getting more organizations out. The one in Montreal will be big. That'll push it back too. Um, and that's kind of their catch-up mechanic on that one. But there's still um, organizations to be built for the loyal player that just haven't come out yet. So it's a, a dangerous rope they're walking, even though they are in the lead. So that is the 1834 turn, and we'll be back next episode with 1835 and 1836.